Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the troubleshooting Juniper Secure Connect part one learning bite. And before I continue, I want to point out that this is part one of a three part series. So please, when you're done with this learning bite, check out the other parts. All right, so here is our example. The topology you see here might be kind of familiar if you've gone through my other Juniper Secure Connect Learning Bytes because it's the same one. And so what we have is we have a few different devices. We have SRX1 that is connected to the user's zone, and then it's connected to the server's zone, and then it's connected to the untrust zone. Now the user zone has just your typical branch users and then the server zone has server one. Now take special note of that IP address of server one that is 10.60.60.100. That'll be very important for our learning bite today. Okay, then the remote worker is connecting to the internet and the remote worker needs to access server one and not access anything else in the user zone. We want to prevent that type of access. And so what are we doing for this learning bite? Well, Currently, Juniper Secure Connect is not working properly. And so we'll do a few things to troubleshoot this problem. First, we'll set up extended logging so we can really understand what's going on. And then we're going to have three different troubleshooting scenarios. We're going to have an authentication error scenario, some connection errors, then a connection success. But then after that, we won't be able to access server one with the remote worker through Juniper Secure Connect. Okay, so and with this, what is our definition of success? Well, success is when the remote worker can access server one. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the remote worker and get this started. All right, so here is the remote worker device. And what we want to first do is we want to first configure extended logging. And if we go to the Juniper Secure Connect client and we select help and then go to extended log settings, and here we are able to enable extended logs. And first we'll do the enable driver full trace, and that's for the client VPN dialing service. And then we'll also want to enable extended PKI logs and extended PKI interface logs, as well as client monitor, client command line tool, and credential provider. And you may or may not need to restart these. Uh, normally you don't, but if you are having problems with this, then you can click restart. Let's click OK. And then let's try to connect to the VPN. But before I do that, I do want to show that here on the side, we're pinging the server one IP address. And since we're not connected to the VPN right now, we can't reach it and that's expected behavior. And so here in the client, you can see it says extended log mode, it's blinking. So you know it is running in extended log mode. And before we actually connect, let's actually go back to help and then open the log book. And here's the log book. Let's go ahead and clear that screen. And then let's go ahead and attempt the connection. And we're going to use our lab username, a password, and immediately we get kicked out. Now here you can see just in the client, you see a message that says configuration download, authentication failed. And if you look in the logbook, you can see pretty much the same error. You really don't get a lot of good information from something like this. But if we scroll to the right, we can see that we started to download the configuration from the 10.111.111.1 host. That's the host we're connecting to. That's the SRX1 device. And then we just get told that configuration download didn't work because of authentication failure. And so this could be a situation to where the user is trying to log in and they can't, they can't do it, they can't do it. And so they're upset. They think there's something wrong. So they call you as the IT administrator and they want you to figure out what's wrong. And so we know that the remote worker tried to log in, just couldn't log in. And so let's go ahead and jump to the SRX1 CLI and look at the logs. We're going to find some more information there. All right, so here is the SRX1 CLI. And let's look at the log messages, show log messages. And then we'll match on remote underscore access. And there's one message here. Great. So what do we see? We see authentication failed for user lab. And then it gives the VPN name, which is RAVPN SDLB. Uh, from IP address, that's the IP address that the user's coming in on. And then we have the actual message that we want to see, invalid username or password. So what's happening here? We know the user is using the right username, it's lab, but they're using the wrong password. So we can just tell them, hey, use the right password. And so this is a way for you to find out that the user is using the wrong password. We know the username is correct, but we know that 
authentication is failing and it's got to be either an invalid username or password. And so in this case, it's definitely an invalid password. So let's go ahead and jump back to the remote worker device and enter the correct password and see what happens. Okay, so here is the remote worker device. Let's attempt to log in again and we'll enter lab and then lab123, which is the correct password here. And things are looking a little different. Tunnel setup, that's great. And tunnel establishment. And look at that. We can communicate with the server one IP address. And you can look at the logbook on the left and you can see exactly what happens. There's a lot of logs to go through here. I'm not going to go through every one. But if you're really interested in the entire process, this extended logging will tell you everything that happens. It's incredibly helpful. What we have is we have a few different devices. We have SRX1 that is connected to the user's zone and then it's connected to the server's zone and then it's connected to the untrust zone. Now the user's zone has just your typical branch users and then the server's zone has server one. Now take special note of that IP address of server one that is 10.60.60.100. That'll be very important for our learning bite today. Okay, then the remote worker is connecting to the internet and the remote worker needs to access server one and not access anything else in the user's zone. We want to prevent that type of access. And so what are we doing for this learning bite? Well, currently Juniper Secure Connect is not working properly. And so we'll do a few things to troubleshoot this problem. First, we'll set up extended logging so we can really understand what's going on. And then we're gonna have three different troubleshooting scenarios. We're gonna have an authentication error scenario, some connection errors, then a connection success, but then after that, we won't be able to access server one with the remote worker through Juniper Secure Connect. Okay, so and with this, what is our definition of success? Well, success is when the remote worker can access server one. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the remote worker and get this started. All right, so let's go ahead and attempt to log in with the remote worker device and see what happens. You can see it's trying here. It's kind of taking its time. That's not what we saw when we connected last time. So there's definitely a problem here. You can see here that it shows that we're checking valid configuration. And it almost seems like things are going to time out. And it did. Okay, so what do we have here? In the client, we see HTTPS request failed. Failed to connect to that IP address that we're using. Port 443, timed out. And in the logs, that's just kind of what it shows too. Nothing really extra in the logs here in the client logs that is in the log book. So with that, let's go ahead and jump back to SRX1's CLI and see what's in the log messages there. All right, so here is SRX1 again. So let's do the show log messages, match remote access. And we first see a fail message that was a part of the other step. Then we see an auth okay and then a log out okay. And so that's when we connected successfully and then logged out successfully. So there's nothing new in there. So we can look at the log messages again and look at KMD or match on KMD. And there is one connection, but this was the good connection. And it shows that things went through okay. And what this log message is actually showing is that when we disconnected, it showed that the IPsec SAs were cleared, the security association. So nothing too helpful there. But remember that the log message on the client said it couldn't connect on port 443. That kind of sounds like a security zone, doesn't it? So let's look at the security zone. And you can see here that the host inbound traffic system services is deactivated. We need HTTPS, IKE, and TCP in CAP enabled for host inbound services for a Juniper Secure Connect VPN to work. So let's go ahead and activate that. And then I'll clear the log messages just to get rid of the old logs. And then let's go ahead and jump back to the remote worker device and see if this changes anything. All right, so here is the remote worker device. Let's try to connect again. Things are looking a little better. And that connection established. Great. And we can see we're talking with the server again. Perfect. So that fixed our problem. 
what we have is we have a few different devices. We have SRX1 that is connected to the user's zone, and then it's connected to the server's zone, and then it's connected to the untrust zone. Now the user's zone has just your typical branch users, and then the server's zone has server1. Now take special note of that IP address of server1 that is 10.60.60.100. That'll be very important for our learning bite today. Okay, then the remote worker is connecting to the internet and the remote worker needs to access server one and not access anything else in the user zone. We want to prevent that type of access. And so what are we doing for this learning bite? Well, currently Juniper Secure Connect is not working properly. And so we'll do a few things to troubleshoot this problem. First, we'll set up extended logging so we can really understand what's going on. And then we're going to have three different troubleshooting scenarios. We're going to have an authentication error scenario, some connection errors, then a connection success, but then after that we won't be able to access server one with the remote worker through Juniper Secure Connect. Okay, so and with this, what is our definition of success? Well, success is when the remote worker can access server one. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the remote worker and get this started. All right, so let's go ahead and connect to the VPN and see what happens. All right, things are looking good. The tunnel is being set up and the tunnel is established. Perfect. However, notice that we're not able to reach that server. That ping that I have running is not giving us anything back. The request is still timing out. So we have another problem. We can connect, but we can't communicate with the server. And we can look through these logs. These logs are actually a little more helpful now since we have a bunch of stuff to look through. And we can see here that it downloads the configuration and then uh, phase one sets up. We see phase one, phase one, and then we start getting into phase two. And so, yeah, this is a little confusing. There's really a lot of stuff in here. But something I do want to point out here in phase two, I want to point out something. This, these messages right here, we see source ranges 10.77.77.33, and then it says for any port. Oh, let me stop the logging and go back up. And then it says DST ranges, destination ranges 10.99.99.99 for any port, uh, 0 through 65535. And so, if you know anything about these logs, if you've worked with this before, this is kind of something hard just to, to guess what, this, what the problem is here. And so this is what we're getting for the traffic selector. And so you might realize that this 1099.99.0 for the destination traffic selector, that's not the server address. And so we might have a problem with the traffic selector. So let's go ahead and jump to the CLI of VSRX1 and do a little more digging. Okay, so here is the CLI of SRX1. Let's look at the log messages. We'll match on KMD. And there's nothing currently there, and this might seem a little confusing. You might have expected to see something here. And the reason behind it is it's not going to collect the log messages that we're looking for when the user logs in, but it might collect something when the user logs out. So let's jump back to the remote worker device and log out of the VPN. So let's disconnect. All right, so we disconnected and let's go ahead and jump back to SRX1. Okay, so here's SRX1 again. Let's run that command one more time. And you can see here, we have something of value. We have a log message. And if we dig into this, we can find out more information. And so one thing I wanna point out is under traffic selector, we've got the remote ID, we've got that 1077 33, then we have the local ID of 10.99.99.99. Notice that's not the server IP address. That's a problem. So let's go ahead and look into that. All right, so let's go into the security IPsec VPN, VPN name, traffic selector, and then the traffic selector name. And we can see in here that the traffic selector is configured incorrectly. So let's change that change it to the server IP address and commit that configuration.
All right, so that configuration is committed. Let's go ahead and jump to the remote worker device and test things out. All right, so here is the remote worker device. Let's go ahead and attempt the connection again. And it's connecting again. And it did that last time. Remember, it connected, but we couldn't communicate with the server. And look at the command prompt. We can see that we are communicating with the server and we have fixed that problem. So that brings us to the end of this Learning Byte and also the end of this Learning Byte series. And in this Learning Byte, we demonstrated how to troubleshoot Juniper Secure Connect problems. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology-specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.